been working in community and community economic development for over 40 years now. And I have been saying to people lately that in all of those years, never before have I seen such a great opportunity to make actual real meaningful change to our economy, which of course affects all aspects of society and our planet collectively owned and, and cooperatively owned businesses and social enterprises contribute hugely, uh, not only to our economy, but to our quality of life and the well-being of our planet. And they're particularly resilient during times like this. So in the 2007-8 financial crises, they actually grew at three times the rate of the economy, created six times as many jobs, Aki Energy, for example, um, you know, it's an aboriginally owned uh, cooperative or enterprise um, in uh, northern Canada that did something really creative where they took, um, you know, a small First Nations community uh, that was reliant on diesel fuel uh, to power their community. And they instead trained a bunch of um, First Nations youth and others to install geothermal and they replaced that diesel fuel with geothermal and in the, the making of it, they trained all these workers who have now gone on to install geothermal in many other First Nations community and to become more self-reliant, reap the benefits um, of that themselves economic leakage, monetary leakage, happens at three levels in our region. Uh, the first level is with consumer spending, where the money then is leaving the region, all of the profits, the disposable incomes leaving the region. The second form is in uh, all of the big anchor players, both public and private, do all of their procurement usually somewhere else. And then finally, the industries that um, are uh, extracting natural resources, uh, they're also extracting the profits out of the system as well. There's a number of small businesses that you can point to that could be vanguards for a way forward. Uh, and again, it would depend on government support, um, capital investment from uh, CDFs, community investment funds, or other pools of investment like that. Uh, but there's some excellent examples pretty well across all of the resource sectors. One of the things that I think, you know, Center for Local Prosperity has been a real lead on is the whole concept of localizing the economy, that we continue to go on this path of being self-reliant in the region, um, but global in terms of our uh, consciousness, so that uh, we realize that climate change is real, it's going to get worse, um, but despite the fact that the climate's gonna get worse, we could change the way we operate and actually thrive uh, economically uh, and socially. Over the last two, three months, people have become uh, uh, more acceptable to some progressive ideas of how systems can change. Things like the CERB program, uh, you know, transition into a guaranteed livable income. Other programs that uh, have focused on uh, rent subsidies and loans to small businesses. But, you know, we also have a tradition here of a lot of conservative values, which will be asking, well, how are we going to pay for that? I don't think the solution is taxes, but uh, perhaps publicly owned industries of necessity, a public option that gives people the opportunity to invest in corporations that are publicly owned, that serve the public good rather than just profit to shareholders. And examples of that could be insurance companies. The internet has become a necessity of life for communications. And why not have a publicly owned internet system? Uh, transportation is another obvious uh, solution, uh, as well as energy. There are publicly owned renewable energy systems. Um, and when the profits are generated from that, it goes into upgrading the, the, uh, the services and expanding those energy systems that are green and renewable.